It's the only wrestling podcast on earth with two Major League Baseball All-Stars, Dimitri Young, who is not here, Jason Kindle, who is here, one four-time Stanley Cup champion, Darren McCarty, who's here, one rock star in Lars, in Lars Fredrickson. Lars? Lars. I, Lars. Lars. Dude, I heard it. Dude, Dude he's I, already making fun it, of you. Is the COVID, is the COVID he's a subtle COVID. assassin. Oh. Lars, you're, you're, hey, you've been in a band, I can tell, because he's a subtle assassin. He's like the bass player. He won't say nothing, mumble yeah. under his breath, right? You know? Lars is the reason both DMAC and I played as long as we did. He's the reason I got four cups. Made me crazy, Jay. Made me crazy. He's the reason I got, he's the reason I got in about four fights. <laughs> Good. See, Our, yeah, me too, that one game. <laughs> well, okay, it's a little different. We got high. I know that you dropped your left hook on a lot of different people. Well, yeah, right. I, went to, I went to a brawl one time and a rancid gig broke out. <laughs> oh, the, the kids. Back, oh, hey, hold on. Can we go down memory lane, please, to a mosh pit? Remember the last oh. time you were in a mosh pit? Flannel. You know, my, I don't, Lars, I don't know if you know any of the, uh, the local radio guys in Detroit at all, but Meltdown's been here for 30 years. A good buddy of mine. and He, he, just, he just posted a picture today. of uh, The last show we were at was Black Label Corrosion of Conformity at, at, at uh, say, uh, the Fillmore. You ever play the Fillmore? Did it, or not saying the Fillmore. Or, um, what the freak's it called? It's right beside the Fox. It's a great room. Yeah, That's a corrosion of conformity in double A. Impact Wrestling's <laughs> PD <laughs> myself, Dennis Farrell. It's a wrestling perspective. Sorry. Guys, <laughs> finally through the intro. We're back. It's good. Oh, yeah. Rebranding. This is the way the podcast should be, guys. We have a very, very busy show. I want to start it off with Raw. The legend show. Okay, okay, time out, time out, time out. I have to start this off, Dennis, because last night there we all are on a text um, thread. Sadly, and I I did not like all of us, all six of us, and I did I did not watch it last night, and so I probably said a couple. I just probably popped off a little bit, which I always do, and then <laughs> I got I was working out this morning, and I got on the treadmill, and I popped on Raw, and. Last night, there's about four or five of in our thread that said that this was, it, it wasn't very good. And I'm like, okay, come on, come on. And I watched it this morning and I apologize to all of you guys because it was awful. And um, Legends Night, and the, I, I just didn't get it. So Dennis, that being said, as I apologize to you and the other ones who also said that I turned it off, DMAC, Lars, you might've been in there too. I, I don't know, I think Dimitri was, but it was bad. I don't Bart, did you watch it? Uh, you know, I sort of skimmed through and I'm good. still good. Let me fin let me let me say here's my experience, right? Because I had it on. And Dennis, as he usually does, you know, we'll we'll throw a comment out to whatever. And and yesterday it was, oh man, I, I turned this off. And I was sort of in and out at the beginning, but I agree that like talking at the beginning with New Day, that was painful. And I was like, I never like to give Grant Dennis credit, but he was right. And that show, like by far, if you ask me, what's the best show of the year last year? Okay, there's a lot of different ones. If you tell me what's the worst show and not just the this year, but the worst Raw show or wrestling show that I've seen because it didn't make any sense and because it was just garbage until the last match. I enjoyed Keith Lee and Drew McIntyre and uh, who knows what the fuck Goldberg is going to but he can't talk, unfortunately, you know, like, but why is it, I don't know, hanging on to the past, but you know what? It was like, I didn't turn it off. Although I did turn it off for the last hour so I could turn it back and just watch the, I just wanted to watch them wrestle, but I concur a hundred percent Dennis Farrell that, that that was the most painful opening of any raw or any wrestling thing. That was awful. You you have access to some of the greatest wrestlers in history. Shawn Michaels. You you can get Triple H. You can have just about any Stone Cold. And that's the group of legends they gave us. Tatanka, really? Come come on, WWE. Do better. If you're going to call it a Legends Night, give us real legends. I mean, there was rumors that Carlito was going to show up. And I like Carlito. Don't get me wrong. 
But he should not be mentioned as a legend on WWE wrestling. Well, how about when Randy Orton grabbed the Big Show by the neck and he didn't do anything? I'm just sitting there going, like, the Big Big Show has has had an unbelievable career, and he didn't do anything. So let me... Well, that just tells me that's the old Shawn Michaels. Pay him not to say shit. You know, you can... There's a number that you can get me to shut my mouth. Very large, but you fucking that's what I'm saying. It just it just has no authenticity. They're in the, like and you're coming off of watching such a great tribute to Brody Lee slash John Huber or whatever that felt like it like it didn't feel like the real wrestling show, but it felt emotionally engaged to the human being. And then you go to that where you're supposed to honor the let and it was just it was just garbage. It's it's oh, like that the old the old adage of of Vince McMahon changes his mind at the last minute or them not knowing what they're doing. All right. I, you know, I, that first segment, I was kind of excited when I first saw it because I was like, you know, Miz and Morrison are looking like a team, you know what yeah. I mean? And that's, you know, that's one of the things that I was I was uh, reading in, in the editor's column in, in the new P, or the tag team special of PWI here. And it was something that I completely agreed with is like, you know, wanting your tag teams to look like a tag team, like to co- not only complement each other in the ring, but also to to look like each other in a way. You know, with their with your outfits, like the Rock and Rolls or the Midnight Express or or the Road Warriors or you know, the list can goes uh, the Rockers. It can go on and on and on. I'm sure we, uh, you know, Harlem Heat. So when I saw that, I was like, okay. And now they're bringing out the New Day. This could be really, really good. So. As it went on that segment, I, I just was kind of like, this is so stupid and it could have been so much better. And then you got Teddy Long coming out there having it, you know, and then it's like the legend having the senior moment that we're gonna now put you, pitch you against the Undertaker. It's like, you know, I mean, I don't know. I just thought it was, it, it could have been done so much better. You know, the whole show that I've seen. I so think far, it's just- it's it, a bit- uh, Lars, I agree 100%. It's the disappointment of the potential because when I saw Ms. Morrison, I was like, all right, who are we going after? What's it going to be? And then it just was like, and here's the thing. I don't own, if that was AEW, that's their fault. That's the reading off scripts. They're tr- supposed to, these aren't the guy. And that's what bothers me more so. And I think that now as we saw New Japan, you know, night one and other options, it's really, I guess, amplifying how bad Raw is. What's, what's, funny, it, it, what's funny is Lars it, in the text messages was talking about um, Japan wrestling, if I recall right. And this was daring Raw, which made me kind of laugh. But that being said, is there's only one man that can bring WWE back to, I mean, it's not Oldberg, as Dimitri says. <laughs> there's one man that can bring WWE back. It is oh, Lars's buddy. And I'm telling you right oh, now, yeah. he comes back. It's a different world. Well, I think I think that you're right in saying that. Um, you know, but what I do feel is 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 the WWE does has it, you know, they don't have that one guy. You know, I mean they they don't they you know, I know they're trying to make it Roman Reigns and and it's uh, working, by the way. You think? I do. I, I'm really buying into the Roman Reigns. I was his biggest critic. This hill turn, and if they can feed him a good enough storyline to really hammer home what he's trying to pull, I think he can be the guy as a heel. Well, the best thing they did was put him with Heyman. And I, easily. No, no. This, this, is, this is not, I mean, this is me kind of. I watch Paul Heyman. I you know who Heyman I feel Heyman. bad for right now and who they're burying, and I'm assuming he's going to have a couple, is Orton. He has been on every show for, I mean, and obviously that's his job. That's what he gets paid for. But he has been the one that has been on every, I mean, unless, I mean, obviously you got your new day, but I mean, as far as the bigger guys that are getting paid more, the dude's going to have to take a time out here. And who else, who are you going to bring in? You know, the thing that I would love to see, you know, and I thought we were going to see it a little bit, but I was hoping for like a, a dangerous alliance kind of, uh, 2.0 with, but it would be Paul Heyman and the Usos and Roman Reigns, you know, and maybe add a couple of other characters. You what know, if, bring, what if Brock came back? You think Brock would? You think Brock? There's a 
there's a roll or is it Royal too Rumble? big? Because well, I, doesn't that, if there's some sort of continuity, maybe it's a business decision to whatever, like you territory, territory, like part of the same, like it's something that's believable. Who would it be, you know? Well, Brock, we will come back. It's just they're waiting for fans. Same. But here, we're still on this. We're still on who's the, my question to Lars, is we're still on the, who's the guy, like you said, well, who I comes would... in there that gives it the legitimacy. CM Punk. Let, let me mix your question I, in. With CM the, Punk. I, well, hang on. Let I, me... I agree, but it's he's not there yet. Really? Right? Jay, we all agree. Lars said that. We agree. That he'd be perfect. Be the him, he'll be there. I, just like I you said earlier, just like you said earlier, I'll, if somebody gets Shawn Michaels, gives me enough money, I'm going to shut up. Here, here's uh, I don't know, they give him. Where I, 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 I yeah, but the fifty 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 booking is not working either. I mean, I, it's it's kind of bullshit, honestly. And and it is. You know, it's like the reason why Goldberg, Oldberg, who was never one of my favorites, and honestly, I tuned out anytime that guy came on the TV screen. Um, you know, I got you know, whatever. I got my own issues, you know, not personally. I don't know the man, but I just, I never found anything. The reason why he got over... Not a sonic youth, boys. It's not a sonic youth. (laughs) (laughs) No, you want to make that clear, Jay. It's not a sonic youth thing. Because what do we think of sonic youth? We can't stand sonic youth and, and, you know, they're they're just waste of skin. All right, but here's where I wanted this raw topic to go. And it's one of my favorite games. And DMAC, this kind of rolls in with your question. If WWE comes to you and says, you have one month to fix the, our product, the WWE, realistically, re- 100% realistically, what are a few of the steps each one of you guys and myself would make to, to get Raw back on track? Now, I'll give you guys a second to think about this because I'm popping it on you, and I've kind of put some thought to it, so I'll throw – a few of my points out, maybe circle back at the end and throw the other. Lars, Lars are, he, he has his hand up right now. He's ready to go. Know, I want to know real fa- fast, Dennis, are you talking about with the talent that they have on the TV show right now, or do yes. we get to that? Okay. I mean, you know what? If you can bring in one guy realistically, like CM Punk. How, how is CM Punk not realistically? Because you already know mine if that's what the, the well, thing is. The thing. Well, here's the thing. He has a, he has a toured history with the WWE. But CM Punk is also a businessman. So I can maybe see it, but on the flip side, maybe not. If the money's there, let's let's not lie to ourselves. Enough money, but they've thrown money at CM Punk in the past, and he's walked away from it. I, I think that's one of those, you have to catch CM Punk on a really good day for him to be interested in doing something like that. And I think, Lars, I mean, is that the best way, since you're friends with him, to kind of say what he would do? You know what? That's without putting words in his mouth. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, you know, like one of the things why I think we've had a close friendship over the years is because um, things that he says to me or things that I say to him, we sort of keep here. So mm-hmm. I, I, I cannot comment and or um, respond to link twice if you think. I'm gonna no, no here, close. Here's no, the Lars, thing, we have 45 is, listeners. No, you- take that, listen, no, 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 I'm no, gonna no. step in here and take him off the hook and just say CM Punk now has more options to what CM Punk's plan is. Yeah. I believe that he that it's not just WWE gonna be able to do it if if my belief because of who CM Punk is and what he's shown that he's more out of principle, if the opportunity to grow somewhere else to do what he wants. Cause I think the WWE you're, it, you can only get to the top of the, the Thunderdome, the rest of what's going on in wrestling. Where's that going to go? We don't know. Okay. Well, I don't opinion. know CM Punk. I know that he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, but well, I will say this business either. wise, he is the smartest man in the world for waiting, 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 and waiting because all that every day that he waits, the price goes up. All you right. I exactly truly believe it. This is not me knowing CM Punk, and I know that Lars. I know Lars, obviously. Uh, I'm telling you, he's a genius because when he does come back, it's going to be like, I run this now. All right. The CM Punk hour is over. Let's go. I'll, I'll start, Dennis. Okay. What I would like to see. What is, would you do? Not see. What would you do? What would I do? I would, I would align King Corbin with 
Roman Reigns and his minions, which would have Drew McIntyre have to reach out, maybe align with the baby faces, and it starts packing up baby faces that even though they fight each other, but there's some sort of respect, and it comes to the that it all comes to a head of the dark side versus it's the light versus the dark baby faces versus all the heels in some sort of way for some sort of dominance to turn the tide, sort of like um, King of the Castle or you know. Uh, King of the Mountain, right? And then who runs, you know, is it a baby face, WWE, Raw, you know, is it more temperament or is it more of a darker healer? You know, that that's what I'd like to see, more continuity, more, because that contains a storyline and it can carry along. And at the end of the year, it all plays out where, you know, it's just something that has to make sense. But I think looking at allegiant alliances because if we see these guys are teaming up and these guys are and it goes to the point that okay yeah they do argue but they see that this is for power and whatever because that's the dark side whereas everybody's joining together on the good side because they need to help each other like the old school wrestlers when do wrestlers like run out of the back to save the guys like they used to you know what i'm saying like that used to be always really cool when you know somebody would come out that you didn't expect or that's how they turn guys so i don't know that's what i would do anybody else before i jump in lars Kurt angle cm punk and <laughs> seth rollins all three together lars well you know i mean if it's a there's no way that i i think that you could change that company in a month you know it'd be like trying to change you know what was what once was uh, Trump's America. I mean, I think just it's like the damage has kind of been done and there's been a lot of like, you know, skeletons that have come out of the closet, you know what I mean? And it would be easy for me to say like nuke it and start it over, but that's, that would be kind of a cop out too. But that's kind of the way I feel sometimes when I'm watching the programming, it's just kind of start over. But I would put the focus more on the tag teams because I would look where my exciting wrestling is. To me, it's in the tag teams. And I, and I honestly think that if you could put together um, some storylines and let them play out and not just cut them off at the nuts from the very get-go, it's like, you know, take the money in the bank thing away from the Miz, right? And make him and Morrison like the solid team that's going after the New Day, bring the Street Profits in there, bring, it, bring, bring all these, like make a tag team tournament, do something that's going to excite me. I mean, I would also probably hire Triple H and say, okay, do it. What I've seen what you've done to NXT. You've made it look like, you know, this insanely cool um, place that you want to be. I mean, even the freaking wrestlers want to be there. You know what I mean? You've called it that what, you know, they sort of rebranded it and, and, and um, called it what the, um, the, the Capital Wrestling Center for that one NXT show. Was it NXT 31 that they did that? Mm -hmm. Who was like Vince? I think that's Vince's grandfather who 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 okay. ran that in shows in that building. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like you know there was this, and that's the thing with Triple H. I think does so well with NXT is that he pays homage and respect to you know the history of it. I think Raw, you know, is 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 too much of that crash course kind of TV, and I feel like they they don't like. I, number one, I would give um, Keith the belt straight up out the gate just give him the belt see what he can do with it i mean this one i think that's their most talented guy but it, he hasn't really had a time i i know that people think that he needs a, uh, some more years to to bust out of a shell and whatever i i kind of disagree i just say you know and what i do respect about the wwe is they do give a lot of the younger guys or newer guys a little bit more um prime time like the, like the street profits and guys like that but i mean to watch, you know, AJ Styles one more time. I love AJ Styles, but like, put him in a different. You know, I don't know. It's just there's so many things I think you can do. I I would, I would fucking put Paul Heyman and I would have him get all of the 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 Samoans and have like five or six dudes deep in a, in a female, you know, and and do like a Dangerous Alliance kind of trip and battle against, um, you know, uh, MVP of uh, what the. Come on, somebody help her, me. Business. Her, her, her business. business. Get, get everybody in that rock and Jason Stratham movie, whatever well, that was called. I can't remember what it was. Bring back some of that 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 old school, deep rooted feudy kind of stuff. Like you know, I'm sure that there's a fabulous free birds there, and I'm not saying just drop in the past and you know and to make it. I'm not saying that, 
you know, obviously you got to develop the talent and the business and the, the styles of to all change so much, but you got to bring some element of that thing that people used to connect with the, re the, the realism, you know, into the present. And I just think that they're having a hard time. And I think that's why people resonate with AEW because they're doing like, they do a win and loss count. It like, it's like the whole thing. It's like, you can get behind a guy like, you know, they say, well, he's won six times and, you know, or he's undefeated so far here and, or even impact, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, they got these guys in there that are just, it's like watching college football. <laughs> it's way more entertaining than the NFL. And I think that's, that's kind they of care. Amazing right now, you know? All yeah. right. Well, <clears throat> day one, I walk in and I throw out scripted promos. I'm I'm going to let the people who can talk go out there and talk. That's what made the Attitude Era so amazing was the guys who could talk went out there and they talked. The guys who couldn't were paired with people who could talk and they covered their butts. I would go back to more freedom for the wrestlers to be themselves. Two, you need two really good feuds on each show. Day one, I go out and I figure out a way to bring uh, the Fiend back, Bray Wyatt, maybe a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing. And there's only one way to slay a monster, and that's with a monster. And guess who you bring back? You bring him up from NXT. We all know it. Who who was the one guy? The one guy. The, 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 the monster, you know, on the big pay-per-views when he broke that gimmick out. And we all got excited, and then he disappeared. Well, he got injured, and it was the first Universal. We all know. Come on. I want to hear you guys say it. The Undertaker. No, what? Jimmy Superfly Snooker. I guess. No, what? I'm just playing with you, Dan. Oh, you guys are killing me. Well, killing me. Spit it out, dickhead. Kill a crop. Kill, uh, first of all, I love Killer Cross. You keep him in NXT for a while because I think he needs time to seize. But uh, no, I, I'm glad you did bring up Killer Cross because that's that is a guy that I want to bring up here. Well, he's a, scary. He is. He's scary in a dark way. No, but uh, status. Um, Lars, why doesn't he like Killer Cross? I don't know. I think he's got issues. Oh, I love Killer Cross. He's actually a good friend of mine. Killer Killer's a good dude. I, I Who are you talking about? Who are you talking about, Vince? Prince Devitt. Just give it to the audience. Prince Devitt. Who's Come on. Prince Devitt. Remember, I'm not I'm not an NXT guy other than lately like lately. Lars, break it down for the boy. Well, you know what? I, I understand where you're going though, though, Dennis, and I think that Bray Wyatt for him to be successful is to have somebody honestly I think what would he's like another big guy but he can move and um you can either put him with another big guy who can move that I think is the polar opposite I think that you need that that good versus evil kind of trip you know what I'm saying so um Finn Balor did, by the way what's that Finn Balor yeah Finn I, I oh, think yeah. him and him and he, Finn would be awesome. is he the painted guy yeah. When he's the devil dude, oh, he's that. Finn but, Balor, like, he's, but, he's fun to watch. But I, I think him. that, that would safe be, you, could elevate, you could elevate the Fiend even more so if you had a guy like Johnny Gargano going after him. I think so, too. But the problem, I think, with the main roster is it, it exposes a lot of the smaller guys. And they don't have the opportunity. We've seen Finn Balor be successful on the main roster level, although it was an injury that derailed him. But... Look, whether we we can all sit here and bash and criticize WWE all we want, but the one fact that no one can deny is they have the most talented roster from top to bottom than any company out there in any history of wrestling. They're from supposed NXT, to. From NXT, do, do you think they need to, to make bigger matches on Raw and SmackDown and not just the pay-per-views? No, I, no. I go opposite. I don't think it's a it's a matter of bashing. And I, and I think it's, it's like where I'm coming from is something that I've loved for so effing long is just disappointing me. And it's just now in this repetitive disappointment every time I tune into their program. I don't necessarily think it's, it's problems with their roster. I think, it's the, I think that there's is something else going on there. 
I think it's writing and storylines, but I would also, I I would I would do Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt and build a whole show around those two guys and go from the top to the bottom. I would put more emphasis back on the Intercontinental Champion and make it the number one contender belt like it used to be. And the it, booking is just it makes these belts mean nothing. No, I I agree. I agree, but this is this is how I would I would try to fix Raw right away, and I I would put more I would I would push more guys like Kevin Owens, and if I brought a legend onto my show like Hulk Hogan or or Goldberg or Tatanka or something, they're doing a job to put a younger person over like they should be doing. In the history of wrestling, you know there was a thing called passing the torch that somehow. In the 90s, wrestlers stopped doing. And then you had Hulk Hogan come out just recently. It was like, the reason why I never passed the torch, brother, was there was nobody deserving. Really? Really? Not one guy deserving of the torch? Come on. So I would make some of these legends pass the torch if they come on to my show for a payday. So that's, that's cool. how. That's, Good luck with the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm sitting here with you guys. But uh and one more thing before we move off of WWE and go on to AEW and, and New Japan, I do want to talk about this, uh, this I guess, push in wrestling social media right now that everybody seems to want to have Keith Lee jo join the Hurt Business. And I think that would be a mistake. I You look at the Hurt Business, and it's, it's a group of guys who were floundering that came together and have become successful. Keith Lee does not need the Hurt Business, people. Stop with trying to push this, he should join the Hurt Business, and it would put him over. It would hold him back. Keith Lee is his own superstar. He doesn't need that. Now, I would love to see them try to recruit him, and he keep saying no and maybe feud with them. That would work. But for him to join it, I think hampers any growth that this kid has, and he does not need the Hurt Business. You know what? This is the thing about Keith Lee, okay? And I, I'm gonna make a comparison to a guy that you might go, "What? Do you, what? Do you, I mean, that, you're you're out of your mind." But I see him as the modern day, soon to be Chris Jericho, and I'll tell you why. He can work. With, I can work with a lot of different styles, okay? Which Jericho could do. He also moves. He moves a lot. He's real quick. He's better than Bam Bam ever was. He's just as good as the Taker being a big man moving the way that he is. I understand Taker's probably even bigger than him. But my point is, is that his style and how he wrestles, he can compliment anybody. And, I, and his body style and everything like that, whether it be a small guy or a bigger guy or whatever, he still looks strong, you know? And what's I, it? I, I so I was gonna I was gonna add to your point because I agree because the more I think about it because not just what you're saying physically but psychologically and the charm. I think he's you guys got are charm. crazy. No way. No, Lee he's got like because Jericho. here, Jay. No way. No, no, this, no, he can. What can Jericho do? Flip, flop, heel, face, heel, face, and then be caught in the middle. No. And you hate him, you no. love. But it doesn't matter. We, yeah, the Keith Lee has the ability to make that career because here, think about this. Dennis's storyline. Her business goes after. I think King Kong dude, Bundy's like Shawn Michaels. Along. He's not doing what? I think King Kong Bundy's like Shawn Michaels. Uh boy, listen. My whole point. That's my whole point. What do you know? But you don't know. No, no, that, that, that is right. There's no. Maybe getting, Lars should have. I understand what he's trying to I say. But the picture of what he can do because. It's not. It's the storyline where he can fit in the storyline, and he he could wrestle a small person and a big person and a fat person and a skinny person, whatever style they want. You could put them in a woman's match. You could cross, whatever. The best thing the Dennis is like. What if they did that him against the Hurt Business, whatever? So it forced all the way around. It forced him and McIntyre to team up, sort of legions, and then he beats McIntyre, and then that way the Scottish champion goes down, sort of with honor. It keeps him that the better man that there's sort of some sort of semblance of good at the top instead of just the bad going around, like something like that, right? Like every I'm thinking single, story. Like. Every single guy in the Hurt Business, let's just say they went ran with that angle, DMAC. Every Good. single guy in the Hurt Business, Keith Lee could have a 
a four to five star match with. I guarantee it. Absolutely. From Cedric Every Alexander to MVP to Bobby Lash, like he could go power to Bobby Lashley and high flying to Cedric Alexander. Yeah, I I follow you as far as Jericho, and then I think he's got the charm to not just to be the good guy. That's why Roman Reigns is so good to Dennis's point, but he needed Heyman to really get dark, right? Because he wouldn't be believed because everybody no wanted way. to hate he, him. He and Jericho can be similar. No let, way. Let me let me say this, Lars. I I see where you're going, but I think more of a closer resemblance would be to Big Van Vader than Chris Jericho. I think no, that's where no. I think you'd be limited no. because but you, you can't even put the large. large. You can't put Bam Bam and Jericho in the same category. That's I a tough think, one to swallow because think, no, but that's why we didn't compare him. We compared Jericho to Keith Lee because of how he can wrestle with anybody different size wise, how he can control the mic, how he's got charisma and charm, how he can play heel and baby face at the same time. You, you name a guy that can't. Vader's a big loaf guy that can't. Rah, rah, rah. He, he just can yells and growls. Was, he can't be charming. Could Vader be charming? No. I, Could I haven't Lee seen Lee 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 Lee. a girl? But yeah, just he's got it in him. You, just, you, we haven't you seen see it. a guy. I mean, listen. That, allow him to. He hasn't been allowed to. I, I agree got, with uh, Lars that, that I see what you're saying, Lars, but I see it on a, on a deeper level. I, but that I, could be the musicians in us, right? I mean, well, you're the musician. I'm not. I, wait, wait. I, feel like, I feel like he's a jewel in the rep. Like, I've seen his stuff, what he's done on the yeah. indies. Okay? I've seen what he's done on the indies, have 30, 40-minute matches. I've you know, watched a ton of tape lately. So. I mean, listen, if you guys, if, before you can make a decision, you need to go watch that. And then you can come back agree, agree, and say, because he's not, Van, there's no comparison between him and Van Vader. Van no, that's a one trick pony. That's I, a fucking, you're insulting Keith Lee. I, I almost spit it on your face. Lars was the one who said Vader. Realized it was my phone. No, I no. did. Uh, Bam Bam, that I'm sorry, it was Bam Bam. But Bam Bam. No, no, he said more, he's more to Bam Bam, but I think he's got more tools. Bam Bam's more of a, maybe a two and a half tool player. Keith Lee's got the ability to be a five-tool player. Uh, agree with that a thousand percent, but no, not in Jericho's. I could see Keith Lee, right, and I could see him now. And I know a lot of people say he needs more time, and I get all that. But a guy like Keith Lee could could go and uh, wrestle a, uh, a a psychology master like um, like Regal, and also wrestle a guy like Rock and hold his own. You know what I mean? Even with Rock, makes sense. And I think Keith Lee's personality, if he was given that shot to wrestle these guys with uber charisma, he would rise to that occasion. He has it in him. I, I Waiting to be released. I see it. I think because maybe it's because we, we've seen more matches of him in the indies. And I, I didn't they have, hear what been Lars said. To do some of that, right? Yeah, I mean, I, it's the why, why I feel it's so reminiscent to Chris Jericho because I see the crowd. Mac, right now. <laughs> and I see the, the, the response. It reminds me when Jericho first was kind of popping off a little bit in WCW. And that's kind of why I'm making the, the connection because I see Keith Lee in that same spot. But just, and once Jericho went into the WWF or WWE or whatever it was at that time, I, you know. Um, and he became the champion, what, six months after he, he got there? Something like that, yeah. And, um, and, then, and then held, he was the first um, to hold both belts, right? The heavyweight. Yes. Yes. The first so, dispute to beat the Rock and Stone Cold in the same night. That's right. And so this is, this is what I'm talking about. I th and that, that put Jericho on another, I mean, I watched his stuff. Another play. You're talking about the Rock and Stone Cold though, Lars. I mean, who's it going to be Jay, now that is like Jason, can I ask, Jay, who is your catcher? Who is the guy that you looked up to? Who's your favorite player growing up? You. Rod Carew. Yeah. Rod no, Carew was my Was there a player, catcher, but, right? Was there my, a catcher? My father. There, okay, right. Now. Right, whatever it is, you tried to play, and a part of you as an athlete that that played was to, you know, try to be as good or better than your idol, or to, you know, you did things, some things better, and something worse. I don't think his body of work, like he's got a long time, and I think the mis the misunderstanding is his his playing, right, 
could be a Jericho plane. He's got a lot of work to do. Well, no, I understand. There's a lot of different guys hey, Mac, that I understand even that. get off onto the plane, right? right. I understand that. I understand and, that. And he's not Jericho. So I get what you're saying because Jericho is one of a kind. Okay? Yes. So, but, but this is somebody that if you're looking at, you know, kids coming up that this guy's got the tool. And I looked at my dad. My, the reason my dad couldn't hit as a catcher was because he he had a 37, 37 bat. I mean, that's like a freaking, you're swinging a, a dumbbell. What'd you use? 33, 31. <laughs> wow. Really? So, yeah. Right. He, he had, on. my dad, I picked up one of my old man's bats and I'm like, dude, you want to know why you couldn't hit? Because you're swinging a 37 inch, 30. I mean, 37 ounce bat. You think you can get around on Bob Gibson? Now, if you connect, yeah, that's great. But yeah. coming out of 98 hot, dude, the, the ball's in the glove, and now you're swinging. Here's here's the problem. Yeah, we don't know what that's like, Jay. <laughs> yeah, no, especially me. Uh, video games, maybe. No, you got balls that's coming out of your 98 miles an hour all the time, Dad. That's what he's fucking talking about. <laughs> you, you know what? <laughs> How how many Stanley Cups has potential one? Zero. How many batting champions at championships and World Series trophies has potential one? Zero. How many gold records has potential written songs for? I love you, Jay. The funniest quote on about, this show ever. But, but it is about potential because that's no, what no, you no, guys no, no. basically that's not what we're talking about. about here, Dennis. We're not talking about potential. I've heard the word potential oh. 900 times in this conversation. No, but listen, here's but, the it, but the context of the word, go ahead, Lars, tell him. Well, it, it, he's got it. But the problem is, is that there's nothing there to elevate him. There's no guy. It's not fucking Randy Orton. Sorry, Kendall. It's not. <laughs> you guys know I love Orton. I love this conversation right now. And I honestly, Dennis, put a check mark by this. I think this is a question we ask Angle. A, a, PD, too. And PD. This is a good Agreed. one. I like this. Let's we'll table this one. We table, can table, move on. We can we can table and move on. Let's talk about the dark order here. Brody Lee has been in the news, the passing. But here's a big question: Is AEW what is next for the dark order? Where does the dark order go from here? And this, believe it or not, on the surface, you you kind of think about it and go, well, Brody Lee's gone. They're going to ride off off this you know movement for a little bit but deep down inside does does the loss of Brody Lee spell the end for of them I I'm obviously they can't end it anytime soon because it was it was Brody Lee's baby but what where where do you go from here if if you're booking the dark order this is tough for those guys in this position right now uh well I think you're gonna have to <clears throat> make a cowboy demonic Ooh. I mean, let's just, you know, I think that might have been you know, <laughs> thought of already, but um, if that's kind of, I'm hoping that's kind of where it goes. I I don't know. I really liked. They got to keep the Dark Order alive because it keeps Brody Lee alive in some sort. They're not going to let it go. That's too distant. But, but they also have put enough place because John Silver's got enough pop. Now Alex Reynolds. You know what I mean? They, I don't know what they're going to do if they, that makes the most sense. And I would like that right where, where hangman takes over, but, but who knows? AEW to me is like, I feel about Christmas or birthdays or if somebody gets you something, it's like, Oh, cool. You want to open it early? No, I'll wait. I'm good. When I was younger, no, a, the AEW is, they're always going to do it to me right now. More more times than not, better than I would have thought. Or it'll make sense because they like to play out the storylines long time to tie around. Now they got more more factions to work with, with the Impact and New Japan or whatever they're doing there. So they're it'll not, be interesting. They're not going to keep it alive by adding the Colt Cabanas of the world into the, to the faction. But I think that if they, if they get like, a, I mean, a sting... What if the sting came in there and took over? Well, you know what I mean, I, I think you're right as far as peeling it back from let the Jokers go be the Jokers. Maybe Silver leads his own little Joker, Mary, Mary man of, of funny guys. 
and then Hangman, like you said, turns into and that turns and Darby Allen that turns into the Dark Family, right? You know what I'm saying? They're all sort of yeah. It'll be interesting. And then Penta shows up, Penta Zero, and he's like, "Hey, I look dark. Hey, come on." <laughs> that that's interesting. <sighs> Man, that, that Mars, would you be the villain? What's that? Would you be the villain of uh, Marty in the Dark Order? Ooh, Marty Squirrel. Listen, here's a guy, and that's a good question because Marty became a free agent just recently. Out of curiosity. Marty became a free agent, although he was part of that whole uh, speak out movement. And I only know his side of the story. And it was a good conversation I actually had with Mark Madden yesterday, Jason, to bring that's a good that, that you brought this back around on Twitter was, you know, he kind of got nixed out at Ring of Honor because of the speak out Me Too movement. I think you know, his story is, and I only know his side, and I'm only going off of his side because that I don't know hers. But, you know, he's I at just a, asked a I just wanted to ask a question. I didn't know. I, I, no, I'm Mark Madden, I'm Mark Madden about, when you brought Mark Madden up, it's just kind of like, and I, I like Mark Madden, kind of. Well, all right, Lars, would you bring Marty Squirrel in to run the Dark Order, who was originally thought of to be the leader? Um, Well, it's a little hot right now, isn't it? I see, a little bit. I think he kind of did his time, but not really... And if you were to believe what his explanation is, I I don't know. Look, at, you know, it's 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 one of we live in a culture right now that is so cancel culture and is so, um, you know, guilty until proven innocent. And I mean, that's just the way our judicial system yep. works. It's just the way the United States of America works. And it's because you have the media and they have their own agenda and nine corporations of the world own all the media news outlets of the world. So everybody's got a slant because they're trying to sell something. So, you know, you can't really get to the facts anymore. And I think that is that I know that's a whole other show and a side note and not probably uh, relative to what we're talking about here, but I would definitely, you know, I, you know, you can't really like add a guy like that into your mix because you know, there is legitimate stuff for women in business and there has been for hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's kind of coming to the surface. It's like all these skeletons are coming to the surface, you know, and we see that in our country right now. And um, I just don't necessarily know if AEW um, would, would touch a hot potato like that, at, no matter how talented he is. Agree. Uh, I think if there's a company that could, I think it is AEW because well, I'm, unfortunately Darby survived it. Darby came back hotter than ever. So if there's a company that can come in and, and really say, look, we, we know this guy has a black mark on him. We're going to sit down. We're going to put him through some training. It's a little different. Don't you, don't you think? I don't see once again, I don't know what Darby was, was what Here, here's what I would think diligence by AEW and Tony Khan if they pursued it and we saw him show up on the show I would I would say from how what they've proven and what they showed is that okay then it, it must be cool right WWE I'd be like uh, there might be you know a little backdoor <laughs> deal but that's just because right because and that comes to culture comes to from the top so my, my so, whole point is the dark order doesn't need a leader I think they're in a perfect spot right now well, I think I think you got guys that could be potential leaders there already. You know, but do you I mean? think they need it now? I think right now what they're doing, I think, is perfect. I think they got to let you know Brody's um, legacy sort of live a little bit. You know what I mean? I think that would be the respect, respectful thing to do. Um, and you know that I mean because if we talk about Brody Lee, we know how much of a worker and hard worker yeah. he was. And I got you. And just by the outpouring of love, and I mean, I haven't seen that for a wrestler by other wrestlers in my entire effing life. It was pretty special. Here's what I think I would do, and it would, I think, fix the Dark Order in the short term, is since they're really kind of showing Brody Lee Jr. love, his, his younger son, I would have had him, and still could, have him show up and, and, and point to 10 or Uno or any one of the dark order and go, you are the new leader. And that would he could, he could yeah, there could be some angle that way. And too. that's how I would pick the new leader. And as you see him growing right where he chooses, he comes down, 
and we see him over the next 10 years, right? Every year he makes a choice of who's the leader for now, or, or maybe he can fire him like a GM. Come I, down from the fucking booth where, like where Darby hangs out. And, now, and, now and did you, did you guys, ass. listen, I obviously I have no filter, but did you guys, um, and I just saw this on text threads between all of us, and um, I know Dennis is not the biggest CM Punk fan or whatever. I'm a huge CM Punk fan, as you guys all know, um, and he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time and i love the fact that he went in this i love the guy we did don't. you guys already uh talk about cm punk and what he did or is that not supposed to be no 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 that that's good i think we talked about it on the first podcast when pd came back which and i i i, I tell you uh as a wrestler as a personality i am not a huge cm punk fan but as a person the fact that he here's a guy that walked away from a wrestling business, went out and did UFC, and although he may not have been as successful as he wanted to be, he did it his way. Writing comics for Marvel, people may not have liked it, but he did it his way. And I respect a guy that does that. And I respect a guy even more who him, and he started the trend because he started it, then uh, Mick Foley did it, who said, look, over the next couple months, everything I sell on Pro Wrestling Tees, CM Punk, you know, pro, pro wrestling teams.com backslash CM Punk. Every shirt, everything I sell there, a hundred percent of that is, is going to the Brody Lee family. And then you've seen a couple other people do that behind them, the two notables, as I said, CM and, and Mick. And I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Jason, because it's, just, it's, it's, it's classy. It's a classy, classy individual. And yeah, but he comes there, there's there's life outside of the entertainment part of it and you you develop these relationships and these relationships last forever and it's it's a classy classy person and like i said i don't know him he's one of my favorite wrestlers i know lars does what a class act yeah. well but the, you know i wasn't surprised by that move because i think that if you look at his aesthetic and look what he's been talking about when he when he was in the business and even out of the business this is what he was talking about exactly this and it's not even about getting recognized for those gestures that's that's not even his mo trust me if there's anybody that i've known in this world i mean you know i've seen him on both sides of the coin like when he would be in a feud with somebody he would legit try to be angry with the guy you get what i'm saying so that's he, he listens. That's because he listens he to music. So, so he could, so he could, so he could bring that realism to the ring. That's psychology, right? And it was just a small thing that I noticed. But on the flip side of that, what he was complaining about and talking about was exactly this: let's come together. You know what I mean? Let's, you know, because if we're all together and not out, you know, all out for ourselves, we might have a better working environment. You know, we need, I think that he's, you know, when he was at the end of his tenure with the WWE, he was a leader in that locker room. And I think people respected that, you know? That's because that's, that's what Ransom does to you. But, but, but I mean, it's like, that's the thing. I'm telling you though. I, I wasn't surprised and, and, and honestly wasn't surprised that Mick Foley followed suit because I mean, you know, I, 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 I've never met Mick. Well, I've met him a couple of times, but I've never really had a conversation with him or whatever, but you can see that he's a genuine person and he's not out yes. for Agreed. And, I, ha I have, he is, he's awesome. So, and I, and I, I just know my, my buddy Phil and I know that that's just kind of who he is. Buddy like, Phil. I when him. I was getting divorced, that was the first person I called. You know what I mean? Because I knew that if there's anybody that was going to rally around, and it wasn't like I consciously made the decision. It was just like I just knew that, like, that's my guy. For yeah. some he doesn't, he doesn't understand. Awesome. And you know, Which here's makes me love him more, and why he needs here, to come back, and Vince needs to pay his ass. Here's the dude that, like, when we played Madison Square Garden, um, he called me up. And he says, "I need to be there," and I and I and I knew he didn't needed to be there. Not for him but for me like he doesn't have to come to madison square garden no, i do i do oh it's how my i do i need to be in madison square garden when we play there again but, 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 you know what like, but that's what kind of guy he is that's how he he treats his friends he's like oh, i got you be there for me because i want to experience that for you and then before we played he was like man the garden dude this is a big deal and he, and he never once like said when i 
headlined the garden or when I, he Large. Never, you know, when you play the garden again or wherever you play, I need to be there. Fair there enough. And you're going to come. But my point is, is that he, 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 he was more into the moment I was having than having a moment right. or, or, you know, get what I'm saying? So, I understand it a thousand percent what you're saying. A thousand he, percent. And that's just good surprised. people. I mean, you know what? Surprised. There's good people and there's not good people. And it's a good dude. It makes right. you like them even that much more. So let's, let's wrap up this podcast because we've gone way too long. We haven't even come close to all the topics I want to. I do have a little bit of housekeeping that we want to do before we start really promoting everything else. We, we got the YouTube channel kind of up and running. So if you're listening to the podcast, you want to see the hand gestures, the faces, the, what hat Jason Kindle's wearing this week, go to YouTube, subscribe to the show. We're going to start as, as the – D-Mac. <laughs> yeah, watch D-Mac Smoke. We can do it all. As the subscribers grow there, we will start doing kind of more live stuff and inviting fans to come on and do more things. So uh, help us grow it. Go over there, subscribe, tell your friends, watch the videos. That's how we grow. Wrestling Perspective. Uh, God, you know, we rebranded. We're the Wrestling Perspective now that we brought Petey Williams back home. It's it's exciting. I haven't been this. This is this show today, right now, is what I've envisioned the podcast the whole time for me. If, if there is a perfect game, a perfect song, a perfect concert, a perfect slap shot, this was a perfect wrestling show for us. So, with that being said, putting us over. <laughs> you wait for me to say something swarmy? I, I was. I, was. <laughs> I, I, like, hey, I got chicken swarm or rice bowl after the show's over. That's the only swarmy shit you're going to get out of my mouth. But yeah, I, you watch me smoke. I was I was waiting, but I'm, I'm glad. But uh, DMAC, what do you got going on? I know you just launched your new brand. I did. Uh, Twitter, uh, Darren McCarty 4. Just to remind myself if I get dementia that I have four cups. I told myself that. Um, and any blue check mark for that. Check out uh, Woodward Sports. A lot of different things going on. A lot of things to answer. Darren McCarty brand. And I'm going to enjoy this. And I always enjoy talking to you guys. And Dennis, watch out for those flying balls. Thanks, buddy. I have, I have a safety concern. <laughs> <laughs> With COVID, I've been ducking a lot, so it's it's been working out good. Uh, Jason D. Kindle eighteen. Yeah, and, and you know what? I, I I have you guys are all with the exception of Lars in very cold places, and um, I had my two. I have little dogs, two little dogs, uh, and I slipped down a flight of eighteen stairs. So make sure you put some salt on your uh, <laughs> your back porch. And um, I was safe, just to let you guys know, but. Uh, be careful out there when it's cold and snowy because that's the honest to God truth. I'll have to send you guys a video of it because you guys will laugh your asses off. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy, honestly. Without a doubt. But I'm going to tell you what, I won. I beat the stairwell. Barely. We got to get Kendall a flamethrower. Oh, out. my. No. He's already <laughs> slightly unstable. No, listen, I would party with Kendall in a heartbeat, and I would do flamethrowers with that dude any day. Yes, yes. He gets yeah. the flamethrowers when I get the computer. <laughs> yes. If, when, we, when we meet in person, you're going to have a computer, guns, and a large amounts of flamethrower. <laughs> Dennis, you, you are, you're his son now, right? <laughs> Lars, father, son. Lars, I'm trying to think. Have we ever, have you, has Ransom ever shot a flamethrower off stage? That would be oh, awesome. No, I don't think that would go over well. But um, no, I, I, I don't think that any of you should would be thrusted near anything flammable. <laughs> I did my I did see this 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 video on on somewhere. I think my girlfriend sent it to me. But some guy was was melting the snow on his driveway with a oh, flint. I if saw I, it. If I ever move to a to a cold place, I'm gonna get a effing flamethrower. I just got a. a Freaking leaf blower for Christmas. I'm so stoked on this thing. This thing's oh my God, those things are awesome. Lars, so, where can people find you and Rancid on the internet? Well, obviously, you know, I, you could, I'm mostly on an, I'm an Instagram kind of guy. I'm, you know, I, I, I sort of dabble with the Twitter and, and Facebook. I'm just kind of like, ah, you know what I mean? So, but um, I, I do, a, I have a little store on, on Instagram called Laza's Laka. And um, Laka? Laka. It's so it's very Massachusetts because my anyways it's a long story but I you know I got I I really um, you know I've collected vintage toys records and things over the years and now that I need to you know pay some some pretty lofty bills I got to get rid of it so I'm selling a lot of my stuff on there and uh, you know I I try to just you know 
kind of keep myself busy. So that's hey, and it. Dennis. One last um, thing that you could you might want to open up the show with is I'll guarantee there's not a podcast with more tattoos on it out there or more break dancing without a doubt. Oh, see, you're, 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 I'm telling you what. It's that is a, you this got is a tattoo? A show. I got one tattoo. Where is it? Is it like a little flower. <laughs> you know it's on it. You know it's on it. It's right near his vagina. Oh, oh, oh. It's it's on my arm. It's an old school boss. You opened yourself up for that one. I did. I did. Oh, Dennis, you got a tramp stamp? <laughs> it says he hit goes. It's right above my pelvis. <laughs> <laughs> so I I don't know. I got it when I was younger. It's it made sense at the time. I, my name's not even Joe. So, but uh, listen once again, wrestling perspective. Make sure you go support out all those guys. Petey Williams is back. Uh, go follow him, IPD Williams. Go follow Dimitri Young at D, D, D A Meat Hook Young. Uh, oh, the Meat Hook. Yes, the Meat Hook. So right. go walk, go look at his beautiful ducks. It's listen. The only podcast. Once again, I said at the top. I'm going to say at the bottom. With a rock star, two Major League Baseball All Stars, a four time Stanley Cup winner, a X Division champion, and then a nerdy guy named Dennis. I, so, I would pay for this show if I wasn't on it. <laughs> There we go, guys. That's a wrestling perspective. Subscribe. Do everything. Tell a friend. We'll see you. Kurt Angle. Next show, Kurt the Olympic Hero Angle. So stay tuned.